So this is a new method for us and it's fairly new for seed banking in general, although the calorimeter's been in use for materials analysis for many years. So what we're hoping is that it will replace the need for doing um, post-freezing germination tests it's because sometimes you don't have enough seed to work with. On my last field trip, one of my collections only had seven seeds in it and some of those seeds uh, from other species are dormant which can make it really difficult to run germination tests. So we're hoping that using this we can replace the need for germination tests and get an idea of how the seed's going to respond to freezing and thawing without having to do the germination tests. So what we do first of all is we take a small sample of seeds and we seal them up in a little sample pan. So the first thing I need to do is weigh the sample pan. And the samples we're using are very, very small. So we're weighing these on a micro balance, which is very delicate. And then we put in the seed sample. It's important here not to touch the seeds or the pan with your bare hands because your hands contain oils that can affect the reaction that you see when you put it in the scanning calorimeter. So we're just going to take that over to the pan sealer now so that we can seal the sample into the pan. Okay, so this is the pan sealer and what we want to do now is just seal these seeds into the sample pan. Fingers crossed. So now I'm just putting pressure on the pan to seal it around the edges. Okay, so now that we've sealed the seeds into the pan, we're just going to go back to the micro balance so that we can weigh the sample and the pan. And we have a seed sample weight of 4.44 milligrams. So now that we've weighed our sample, we're going to take this over to the calorimeter and um, see how it responds to freezing and thawing. Okay, now that we have our sample ready, we want to put it into the differential scanning calorimeter, which is this piece of equipment here. And what this will do is lower the seed temperature down to minus 160 degrees Celsius, and then raise it back up again to 50 degrees Celsius. And that's going to give us an idea of what happens to the seed when it freezes and thaws, and that's going to show up in the printout that will be on this screen. So the first thing we need to do is open the sample cover. And on the left side, we have a sample reference pan that doesn't have anything in it. And on the right side, we're going to put in our seed sample. Close the sample cover and then we put in our seed details. So we put in the weight we determined with the micro balance. Make sure you've got your right sample ID and um, sample number. And then we click start. Now that's going to sit there for five minutes and do nothing while the machine re-equilibrates and then it's going to lower the sample temperature down to minus 160. Okay, so this is an example of the output for Macadamia jansenii, which is a threatened species. So you can see this is the cooling curve for the Macadamia response, and you can see first of all that we're getting a freezing response here at around about minus 18 degrees Celsius, which is around the temperature that we normally put our seeds into storage. And then this curve here shows what's happening as the seeds are thawing. And this major blip here is an indication that there's going to be a problem. And you can see that the seeds are starting to thaw around about the temperature that we store them at. So while we think we might put seeds into storage at minus 20 degrees, what we're actually doing is putting them into a state where they're going to be constantly freezing and thawing. And that's going to shorten the lifespan of the seed. So that means that um, storing whole macadamia seeds at minus 20 degrees isn't an option for us. Potentially um, cryopreservation will be an option, but for these seeds, because they're quite big and chunky, what we might need to do is extract the embryonic axis from the seed and cryopreserve that instead. So this process can save us a lot of time, first of all, in running germination tests, and it also gets around the problems of not having enough seeds, 
or having seeds that are really difficult to germinate. So we can find out whether we're likely to be able to store these seeds and retrieve them from storage, retrieve them as a viable seed without having to go through those lengthy processes. At the moment it's only available in a few seed banks, but there are universities that do have this sort of equipment, so it is available for research and it's potentially something that we can use to help preserve threatened species. Um, if somebody wants to bring us samples, we can check to see whether those samples are likely to be storable. Thank you.